I'd like to talk a little bit about some anti-analysis techniques for Android, specifically the ones demonstrated in this post here by Joe Security. In the image attached to the post, they showcase that the file does indeed start with the magic header that you'd expect a zip file to start with, and APK is a zip file. So you can see it starts with 54B0304, and that's PK, then dot dot, uh, the 0304, that's a, a zip file, local file entry. And then later on in the file, you can see that it has a APK signature block. So, so far so good, looks pretty legitimate. However, there's an issue that will arise when you try and extract the Android manifest.xml file. As you can see, they're, they've attempted to do so with 7-zip and it says headless error, and then the file name and no extra detail. So what's going on here? If you scroll a little bit further down on the post, you can actually find some pretty insightful details. So from APK tool, you see that there's some exceptions reported and caused by, caused by, invalid send header, bad compression method. A little bit further down, you can see JADX, which uses the same API as a file, has the same issue, bad compression method. So what exactly does that mean, bad compression method? Well, I have the sample open in Hex Workshop, and you can see that the local file header is here. This is the Android manifest XML file. If we look at the compression method, you see the value is 9,154. Now, mind you, here is a list of the values that are commonly recognized by zip extraction tools. We have stored, which means no compression, a bunch of others, and then deflated, which everyone else really uses, and then deflate 64, which a few people use, but you, you usually see zero or eight. Yet here we have this big number, which does not match any of these. So naturally, if you try and extract this file with a bogus compression algorithm, what's going to happen? It's not going to work because you don't know what algorithm to use to decompress the data. So all this data in the section down here, we have no idea how it's actually going to be decompressed. Except the thing is, this only affects Android files. Why is that? I ended up asking Xstark if he could figure anything out about this problem, and it didn't take him that long to find out why, and of course, his response was intense breathing. So let's take a look at this file. And we see compression method equals compress stored. What's that? We're in an if failed. Oh, that's right. An Android, if the compression algorithm is bogus, it will try again with stored compression, meaning you can assign any file a bogus compression value, like we have here with this bogus value here. And if that fails, which obviously it will, you get compression method equals compress stored, meaning this data is not compressed actually at all. This is just the data as is, which you can actually see here because there are clear text names. This is stored as is without any compression. To which when I continued our conversation, I said, the thing is, it's not stored. I tried passing it into the Google project binary XML and it died. Well, no, I was partially wrong there. It is indeed stored. If you looked at the file format, dummy, me, you would see that of, that, of course, there is no compression. The issue is there's other tricks going on with this file. The compression trick that you can see here with this bogus value is only part one of the real issue. After addressing the zip file portion of the problem and encountering the bit of a roadblock of the binary XML encoding issue, I took a break. Until later, H4K posted that in his tool, Incinerator, he had found a solution to this. And you can see he's comparing his tool to JADX. JADX says the start namespace attribute size is not something it expected at this position, whereas Incinerator decodes the XML file correctly. And I thought, oh boy, this means I'm going to eventually have to 
make a fix myself because no one else is making it and Incinerator is not open source and not written in Java. Goody for me. Now, a bit later, because they follow H4K, I saw this post talking about how there's this obfuscator that actually protects your Android manifest file through a program called APK Editor, to which I was thinking, oh, is that open source? And yes, yes it is. They actually linked to it. And in the source, they have the protector file here, which actually creates the protection you can find in the, the sample provided here, to which if you scroll down, through the stuff here, you can see Confuse Byte Offset, Confuse Resource Table, and Confuse Resdir. This is just some zip file shenanigans with renaming paths. The real meat and potatoes of what's actually making this a problem is this one and this one. Now, what's happening is the chunk model that the binary XML file is formatted in, some portions of it are being changed such that when they are written back to the file, they lie about the size of their uh, of, the, of the relative chunk. So a chunk can have subchunks, and each chunk will report its size. That being said, it is not actually handled in the Android source code to trust those reported values. It will instead, in some cases, compute how much space is left between chunks and given some math depending on what kind of chunk it's going to expect what space each child chunk will occupy to which is why this program is lying about the size to which if you look at the the bugs here the attribute size is not what it's expecting bingo there is the problem there is another issue here with some bogus data. I'll get to that in a bit. In order to get recap to support these files, which would inevitably be a requirement, I thought, OK, I don't want to rewrite the entire chunk parser myself. I don't want to rely on JADX's implementation, which is also problematic. Uh, so my next best guess is I'm going to take the Google version of binary resources, fork it, and make patches to address the solution. To which brings us to binary resources. This is that fork. For a user, the fork is quite simple. All I've done is provided some extra utilities to make actually decoding the XML as streamlined as possible. You can see in this code snippet here, all you need to do is provide these uh, resource providers here. That's an interface that you implement yourself and then you parse the bytes using the existing binary resource file provided by the binary resources project. Then you pass it into XML decoder, which is a modification of something that was in binary resources, but flawed. So I've re-implemented it. Uh, and once you call to code, you get your decoded binary XML in a formatted way. So the implementation details, that's up to you. You can refer to this example implementation that is in the test module, but that's on you. Point being, the problem is now easy to address by yourselves outside of Recaf, just by consuming this project and using this to read your binary XML files. Now, the changes in this project that actually let you parse this file are a bit scattered. The one that I was saying we'd get to later is mostly uh, consolidated here. So we were in the chunk file, and what I did was I added a specific chunk type, just in an um to indicate what kind of chunks there are, uh, for something that is not recognized. This previously did not exist, and if you tried to resolve a type from a code that was not recognized, you would get a failure. So what instead I did was create this unknown type, and then later it would handle it uh, somewhere further down in the code. But uh, instead it would just skip it, because if it's not recognized, it's probably bogus. Because the stuff we really care about anyways, are actually mostly contained with these. Uh, these contain, obviously, the XML contents that we want to decode and print, and the stuff that their values reside within the string table and the resource table, so 0, 1, and 0, 2. So one of the issues with this project, binary resources, is that it doesn't actually match the internals of how Android reads and parses these files, which I mentioned before, with uh, 
computing the actual size of chunks and uh, sections within those chunks rather than trusting the size. So one such case is listed here. The number of strings isn't actually trusted from the value that says how many strings are in this chunk. Instead, it computes how many strings are going to be in this chunk based off of the amount of data that is within the, uh, the chunk itself, and it divides it by the size of an int because what the string pool does is it's just a series of integers which are pointers to where you should actually read the string content from. In each int being four bytes, you can derive, given the section space of how much you have to read, uh, to, well, not to read, but to store strings in, how many references there's going to be. So naturally, if you trust the value that is encoded before, but you have more data or less data, you're going to mismatch the number of strings, and that's going to cause problems down the line. Another issue that we pointed to in the Android protector was that it was changing the reported sizes of certain attributes, to which here we have the XML attribute class. And you can see originally it was going to be the size of 12 plus the resource value that it contains size, which is going to evaluate to 20. So what I did was I exposed this method, which reports the local size, which is always going to be 12 because it's four ints or three ints. Uh, plus the value size, which can be changed. So this method down here ends up getting used over here. So when looking at an XML uh, block, so you know how in XML you can have uh, different attributes in a tag. So what they were doing before was they were saying, okay, we're going to read the next attribute in this current tag by incrementing the offset by a fixed size, 20. But because of the manipulations done in the APK editor, which you can see here, it's changing the size to something that's not 20. Uh, the offsets were being wrong and it was giving you the wrong values because you'd be reading uh, offsets pointing to data for different things. So what we did instead was I said, okay, the offset's going to be plus equal to the attribute size, which is of course the methods that we added here. So this actually addressed the problem, and then we synchronized the buffer so that when it read the next value from create here, which you pass in the buffer, uh, this is lined up to with uh, the, the next expected element position reported by the size, because this is also how it's done in the Android source code rather than in a generalized form in this project, which is not actually used by the Android project. Now, with those changes shown, there were still a number of issues, which you can see in this GIF. Uh, this is the project being used in Recaf. You can see that if I pause, and actually I probably got to zoom in for this to be a bit more viewable. You can see there are blank attribute names. You have uses permission, blank equals, and then the permission name. Having a blank there isn't exactly great. Sure, you can understand what this means, but you're missing data. The question marks, that just means that you're pointing to something in the resource table that doesn't exist, which is because this is just, we're feeding in the XML file without the ARSC data, so you're going to be missing some things. That being said, down here you can see in service, there's four attributes and none of them have names. So even though I was addressing the issues that APK editor was uh, introducing, there were still some remaining problems to which if we go back to the project, where is it here? Uh, thank you, Philip, for uh, improving the XML decoder, because what he did was he would, instead of referring to the, the string contents in the string pool, he would just directly look into the resource map chunk and see if some of the values were in there and then manually map those to strings based off of values provided in the default Android resource table. So thank you, Philip. Uh, he actually fixed this problem. So now if you decode the same Android manifest file that's seen in this uh, GIF video here, none of those uh, attribute names are actually blank. They're all filled in. Uh, I don't have a thing for that right now. So what I can actually do is go to binary resources fork and run the tests. 
And here we have the regular inputs, but here we have the janky inputs, which are the obfuscated samples. And you can see these all have the attribute names. All the attribute names are here and all the attribute names are here. So again, thank you, Philip. I probably would have not thought about the doing, uh, I would have not thought about the, the straightforward approach of just looking in the, uh, the resource map chunk, but, uh, yeah, this project is basically uh, done now. Uh, all the, the obfuscated samples that we have taken a look at can now properly be decoded into legible binary XML. Well, it translates them into text XML and there are no missing attribute names, which is great. And this brings us to sample time. So I have Recap 4 open, and this is using the latest version of the binary resources fork. So let's drag in this sample here. So that's going to open there. We're going to open the, the root directory and open the manifest. And you can see all the stuff is here. This is one of those obfuscated samples, and you can see none of the, the attribute names are missing. So here we have a nice, legible XML file. Pretty nice. We have another one of those samples from the Twitter thread. Same deal. We're going to open the Android manifest file and you can see one of those obfuscated samples and none of the attribute names are missing. Nice and legible. And then this is one of the samples I made myself from an APK file that I use a lot of testing with. Uh, you, you can see here's actually um, the, the directory stuff I mentioned where it's moving a bunch of resources to bogus file paths. Like it's uh, trying to move them into the XML file, which it's not really an XML file, it's a directory name. But anyways, uh, we can open this up. Blooper, I'll have to fix this very soon, but this should be a relatively simple fix. And this last sample here using DexProtect from this MPH group, uh, this isn't DexProtect made by um, the people who make ProGuard, so different DexProtector. Uh, this one also has some similar obfuscation techniques for XML file stuff, but as you can see, all the attribute names here are decoded fine and the file decodes perfectly. So we are good to go in Recaf. And that really concludes all I wanted to showcase and talk about uh, regarding this post on Android anti-analysis techniques brought up by Joe Security. Guess I'll uh, catch you next time when I have some further updates on Recap 4.